Hi, this is just a very quick overview of how to use the new QuickBooks system. The learning objectives here is that we're going to uh, learn how to enter a check into the system taking into account the GST rebate. We're going to enter a bill into the system taking into account the GST rebate and then learn how to pay that bill that was entered into the system. We're also going to learn how to enter a pre-authorized charge against the checking account and then finally look at the issue of how do we enter an invoice for a customer, somebody who owes us money. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use the same numbers over and over again. I'm going to assume that the amount of the bill, whatever the service may be, the amount before taxes is $90. I'm going to assume that the GST that has been charged is $10. I know that's an unrealistic percentage percentage wise, but it's just easy for for figuring purposes. So that means that the amount that is due to the supplier is $100. The $90 charge for their their good or service plus the $10 in taxes. I'm going to assume for our purposes that the GST rebate is 50%. Now, the actual percentage that we get back might be different than the 50%, and that's something that's worthwhile looking up. That's a percentage number that we need to know. 50% uh, actually is a typical value, but there might be other values, and we might be entitled to a percentage that is greater than that or actually less than that. 50% is also chosen because it's just an easy number to work with because all you have to do to, to calculate the rebate is just take the amount of GST tax divide by 2. So $10 divided by 2 is $5, so the GST rebate is 5 bucks. What that also means, though, in the last bullet point, that our actual cost is the $90 of the goods and services that was supplied to us by the company plus the $10 that they charge to us for the GST minus the $5 of the rebate that we'll get back. So our actual cost is $95, not the $100 that's been paid to the company. So I'm going to show you now, we're going to move over to the Safari web browser and I'm going to show you how to enter in that enter in that check to some fictitious company. The starting point almost always is by pressing on the plus key. All of the transactions that relate to people we owe money to is under the suppliers column and all of the kinds of transactions that relate to people who owe money to us is under the customers column. The expense under suppliers deals with the scenario where we've received the bill, we've issued the check and paid the bill. So the entire amount has been dealt with. The transaction has been uh, completely dealt with. So let's go under expenses and that's going to bring up the expense amount. Now in the first column we're asked to choose a payee so let's choose to add a new company. Let's assume that the person who got paid in this case is none of those companies that are in the list and what we can do is put in a new company. We'll call them the BBB company of Canada Limited. They're a supplier, so there's some they are someone we owe money to, and we're going to assume that they are paid in Canadian dollars, and that's probably going to be the case in almost all situations. You can click on details to add more information about the supplier. And then finally, we're going to click on save. So now we have the BB Company of Canada Limited. Um, their mailing address is incomplete. That's because we chose not to go into the details section. 
Um, and here we have a payment date, but let's assume that it isn't going to be the 24th of August. Let's assume that we're doing a catch-up payment uh, and we're doing back work, say, to April the 25th. So you do need to be careful about the payment date. The system is going to assume that the payment date is the date that you logged on to the system. And also the payment method um, it's going to be by check. And let's assume that the reference number um, is x67. Now, let's assume uh, some expense account. We can click on the down arrow. Um, there are already, let's call it commissions and fees. It really doesn't matter. Um, let's go over to the amount. Now, using the assumptions that I had raised at the beginning of the presentation, our cost is $95. If we look at the upper right of the screen, we can see that the BB Company of Canada Limited is going to be paid $95, but that is not correct. They have to be paid $100. Also, we have not accounted for the fact that we are entitled to a GST rebate of $5. That's where the split comes in. We're going to put the GST rebate here, GST receivable, and $5. Now you can see that the amount due to the BB Company of Canada Limited is in fact gone up to $100. We have correctly recorded that our share of the cost of this commission that we have paid to them, the fictitious commission, is really $95. And we're going to add an additional $5 to our GST receivable to show that we're owed these, uh, this $5. With that all done, we now just click on Save and Close. Expense X67 has been saved. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the issue of a check. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to record a check that has been written. Let's assume that it is, again, this BB, rather, let's assume that it's the ABC Gas Company. And you can see that quite conveniently, um, the amounts have already been filled in, mainly because I have paid them before. If these amounts were not right, we would just go in and make whatever changes we want to make. Um, since we're going to, we've got a check to print it later, but in this case, we want it printed right away, so it's going to be check number four. Why check number four? Because I've written three previous checks. If that's not the correct check number, say you're at check number 1733, you can put that in as well. So we're all ready to go. We have indicated that our monthly gas charges is actually $95 of the $100 that's going to be paid. And we're going to add a further $5 to our GST rebate. Again, remember, I'm just using the same numbers over and over and over again. The actual numbers you use will vary. And we'll just save and new. And so check number 1733 has now been saved. Let's cancel out of here and now let's go over to the next item, which is a bill. Now a bill is used in a situation where you haven't written the check yet, but you want to record the expense and the GST rebate and you'll pay them later. So let's assume that we're going to go to the QQQ Company Limited and the terms are let's say net 30 so we have a month to pay it off. Let's say that the bill number is Q45 and again let's make up some account. Let's assume that it is a disposal fee. 
Remember that our cost is $95 of the 100. We're going to put in uh, the GST rebate, which is the $5. So we're going to pay QQQ, or we're going to be billed for $100. The disposal fee is $95, and we're going to add another $5 to the GST receivable account. We're going to save and close that. So that bill number Q45 has been saved. Now, what happens next? Well, we have this bill for $45, or pardon me, for $100 that is owing. Eventually, we're going to want to pay it, so that goes under pay bills. And if we look, we can see that there is a $100 amount due to the QQQ company, reference number Q45. And there's also a previous bill to the AAA limited for $100 for a total of $200. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay these guys. And notice that we can vary the amount that we're going to pay. And notice that we're, these are handwritten checks starting at check number 1734. Click on Pay Bills. And the two bills have now been paid and they're recorded in the system under respective check numbers. If we decided to move to the system where we had the one-up checks or the three-up checks, the one-up system is better, we could have the system print the checks, and we could then print them out and then put them in envelopes and send them off to people. The final uh, thing that we have to do is, well, what happens if we get a pre-authorized debit to our checking account? How does that work? It turns there doesn't seem to be anything in the list to deal with pre-authorized debits. It turns out that a pre-authorized debit is the same as a check, except that it isn't a check that we've written, it's a check that has been automatically been written in an electronic format. So you would just use the check option to record the pre-authorized uh, amount. It is, however, essential that if the uh, uh, supplier is charging us any amount of GST, then we need to have the bill so that we can record the GST receivable and get that money back from the Government of Canada eventually. The final thing is, is how do we deal with customers, um, people who are, say, renting rooms? In this case, we go under the Customers column, we go under Invoice, we can choose a customer, we have to add someone new, Let's call them uh, eight squares. We assume that they're going to pay us in Canadian dollars. Um, in this case, it's due upon receipt. Now, in this also in this case, this is some kind of rental revenue. So we'll just put it under sales, but we could be under anything. Uh, one rate. Um, let's just say that the rate is 100, so that the amount is 100. In this case, there is no GST receivable because this is an amount that is owing to us. So this is pretty much the end of it. So there is also a place here where we can put their email address in for eight squares and send it right off to them, but we'll just save and send it. Well, I guess we have to enter an email address, so whatever it may be. And we will uh, just save it there. Okay, so invoice 101 has been saved. Now, if we cancel out, we can then go back and we can then go to receive payment and we can go to eight squares and we can see 
how much they owe us. We click there. It fills in the payment for us. If for some reason they didn't pay the full hundred dollars, they paid some other amount, we would put that in. We have it deposited to our checking account and then we save and you receive payment $100 has been saved. So you can see that the whole thing is really quite simple and I hope this video has been helpful for you in understanding basically these things. How to enter a check taking into account the GST rebate that's just done under checks. Enter a bill taking into account the GST rebate that's under the enter the bill section. Pay a bill, it's under bill payment. Enter a pre-authorized charge, that's just done under checks. And entering an invoice to a customer, that's under customer on an invoice. The whole thing is very, very intuitive. Thank you very much for listening.